Back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I've got a real treat. Tiana Mick, Hello. what's happening? Thank you for having me, Brad. Super excited. You're welcome. And you want to make sure you speak up so people can hear you. Yes, absolutely. Sorry about that. Because I speak too <laughs> loud and you speak too soft and they turn it up to listen to you and then I get on and they and have to blow turn out it the down. speakers, yeah. <laughs> folks, if you guys ain't following this girl, at Tiana Mick, T-I-A-N-N-A-M-I-C-K. You might be wondering, who is she? Oh, you can also find her at T Got Your Keys on Instagram, social media, things of that nature. You can also find her at TGotYourKeys.com. Now, did you stop that now that you're done selling? No, so I actually have that still up and operational just to be kind of like a awesome demo for what you should be doing in automotive. So it's still up, available, and you can contact me at TGotYourKeys.com. Not only that, but you would probably generate some leads, no? Oh, yeah, definitely. No, a lot. So you're done selling cars. Mm -hmm. Folks, this girl, youngest girl in history to be a dealer principal, so she's going to be getting her own car dealership. She started out in the business as a, as a youngster, smoked everybody on the showroom floor, <laughs> learned everything from relations. I won't say who. <laughs> right. Sean Bradley. <laughs> But, uh, you know, you, you had an advantage because you learned it from the get-go. Mm -hmm. But even with the advantage, you know, it's not easy kicking ass and getting your own dealership. No, not at all. And even like you said, having an advantage is one thing, but taking ownership and opportunity of the advantage is another. So. Yeah, you seem very professional. How old are you? Thank you. I'm 22. I'll be 23 in April. Are you, have you always been very professional? Um, I say yes. Uh, I think that I was always like an old soul. So I feel like an old lady trapped in a body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my wife. You know, it's funny. My wife is, a, is 33, but she, she acts like she's 60, <laughs> which, is a, which is a good thing because I'm older. So, you know, I, I wouldn't want her acting too young. But right, no. being 22 years old, getting uh, your own dealership, how's that feel? It's definitely overwhelming, not going to lie, but like I said, it's a huge opportunity and I definitely don't want to miss out on it. And like you said, I try to carry myself very professional because I am young, um, but that shouldn't strive anybody or any organization away from what I can do. Not to mention, in the car business, there's generally, I haven't been in it in a while, but there's generally not a lot of females. No, not Why is all. that, you think? Honestly, because I think think the automotive industry is very slow to evolving and coming up with times nowadays and especially Gen Z and things like that. So I just feel like the dealership world and automotive organization all together is just decades behind in any other organization and industry, I believe. And that's just my number one thought and reason. Yeah, but do you think the dealerships won't accept them or do you think they are not coming? I think it's a little bit of both, um, just because, for instance, at my first dealership when I worked there, it was very locker room talk. It was, you know, they didn't have a female salesperson on the floor for 10 years, so I was the first female um, they had. I was 19 years old. I just turned 19. I actually was trying to go to college, but I dropped out, and I was like, let me try this car dealership thing. So once I got into there, um, it felt like high school again. I felt like... I was kind of, you know, in the lunchroom or in the locker room listening to a bunch of girls and guys, you know, shit talk and different things like that, which I think kind of prompted me to go into the automotive industry just because it didn't scare me that people were talking like that and being disrespectful. Not that it was okay, but unfortunately, as a, you know, that business, you do have to realize that it's there just because we are decades behind of what should be said nowadays, if you know what I mean. But now you're going to the national conferences speaking on diverse diversity and inclusion yes. so why are they tapping you to talk about that so I believe the number one reason is like I said the way I carry myself is just very professional and it's hard to talk about certain things like being gay or the LGBT community and especially when it comes to car dealers like I said even today though oh yeah no, Seems like today. everybody's gay now. <laughs> I know, now it was like a trend. Like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm bi. And that's like a trend for, you know, your generation. And then you grow up and you're like, yeah, that was a phase. But 
No, it's here. It's here to stay for me, so. Well, I'm a lesbian, just so you know. <laughs> hey, I support it. Me too. So, so you're very passionate about the LGBTQ, is that the right yes. words? Yes. LGBTQ plus. Yeah, plus, the, alphabet, the plus? Al alphabet Mafia. So what do you think about uh, Alphabet Mafia, by the way? It's yeah. pretty powerful. <laughs> it's the Alphabet Mafia. That's what we're called, yeah. Yeah, well, again, I'm telling you right now, folks like, don't want to get canceled. That's usually what you don't want to talk about. Exactly. Or, or make fun of. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm thinking nowadays, like, dude, it's pretty common now. Like, maybe 20 years ago, it was like, oh, you're gay. I know. No, it honestly does feel like that in any other business, right? But you have to think to yourself, when you talk about automotive, these guys are, I just want to say, just these dirty, gritty guys that... Crass. Yeah, and you know, it's just the industry and the... the habitat that they kind of grew up in because their dads were kind of like that right and wheeling and dealing cars and let's roll back the miles and let's glue on this bumper so that this guy can just roll off the lot and you know they grew up with that so my thing is is just because we were raised like that doesn't mean we have to continue doing things like that so with diversity and inclusion we can start implementing and putting people like me or even other ethnicities and people in the LGBT community and other positions to make us more aware because like I said there's no representation in automotive right now it is crazy like you said but there is none well see I thought it changed and got better no mm -mm. still the no. same yeah same old comes, biz yeah when it comes to automotive it really is the same and um like the national automotive minor minorities I'm butchering it but it's NAMAD and they basically they're minority dealers um association and they all come together and basically try to think of ideas on how we can have more representation in the dealership because there's less than six percent of minority people that own dealerships and that includes black asian hispanic everybody but 30 percent of vehicles are purchased from minorities and that that number is only increasing so that's why we really need to flip the script and say okay maybe we can have six percent you know, non-minority dealers having dealerships just because the demographic and our customers are becoming more diverse. It's time for us to evolve from that. Hmm. Do you believe deep down it's an old boy network? Yeah. Because there's a difference, you know. Like, mm -hmm. if, if I'm hiring a dealer principal and there's 100 applicants and one's gay, I'm not going, I personally am not going to, I don't care what they're doing there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take the best candidate. So if every single time the best candidate happened to be, uh, you know, non-minority, mm -hmm. well, then I'd always keep taking non-minorities. But that's just, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. The minorities better get better. But if it's an old boy network, well, then I'm not taking the most qualified because they're a minority mm -hmm. or because they're gay or because they're a female. I'm not taking any because of that. Now that is, a, is, is I believe something needs to change. So do you, do you believe that's kind of how it is right now in the industry? I do believe that's how it is, but just to flip it, just because of what you said, is I believe that even dealers now, whether regardless if they agree with what you practice or not, or